In central Anatolia, within the heart of Turkey, is a remarkable and captivating landscape. Cappadocia. The region is mainly known for its strange-looking volcanic rock landscapes. In some areas, it looks almost extraterrestrial and extends for around 4,000 square kilometers. However, the Cappadocia region is not as remote as it looks from above. The starting point of many journeys into this wonderful natural landscape is the small town of Ergup that is well known for its fine vineyards. But the main interest of most visitors is not the local wine, but the varied rock formations, as well as the fact that these natural wonders also feature fascinating traces of early human settlements. On the periphery of the Turkish town, in front of majestic rock walls, are some partly collapsed buildings that are older than the town. These striking rock formations are most intriguing. How did these ancient and mysterious rocks that are the main landmark of this region take on their bizarre forms? The geological and scenic structure of Cappadocia was mainly formed by the interaction of two powerful natural forces. The first was created 30 million years ago when this region contained a number of highly active volcanoes that covered the land with ash. The ash compacted and was transformed into tough stone. The second was the mighty power of erosion that gradually eroded the tough stone and eventually resulted in what we see today. The surroundings of Ergup are most impressive. The distant views across the remote landscape feature strange rock formations as well as various meadows dotted with trees. A varied landscape with splendid natural vistas. The gentle, colorful meadows on the slopes and in the valleys are in picturesque contrast to the mainly arid appearance of the tough formations of central Anatolia. Soon mysterious formations draw our attention. The fairy chimneys of Dever and Vatisi the name of these rock formations dates back to the original inhabitants of Cappadocia. The first inhabitants of this region believed that the rocks were chimneys which belonged to fairies who lived beneath the Earth's surface. A fantasy indeed. Thus, Cappadocia is still known as the land of the fairy chimneys, a fitting name for this amazing landscape. For 30 meters and more, the fairy chimneys rise above the land. The constant forces of erosion have acted as natural sculptors and have created unique works of art out of the tough stone. Further intriguing rocks appear. They give this place a special mystical appearance, further highlighted by the shimmering colors of the volcanic rock.
It's like being inside an open-air museum. Here, nature has created masterful works of art. Indeed, the formations are so magical that it's difficult to believe they were created by the elements and not by human hand. A natural phenomenon. For the first inhabitants of Cappadocia, the rocks possessed a unique quality and the fairy chimneys, the Peri Bacalan, feature in many local folk tales. Today there are no visible remains of the original settlers of the Anatolian highlands, who date back to the 4th century BC. Notwithstanding this, the surroundings of Devranvatisi impress with their surreal and truly fascinating beauty. The ancient rock formations possess a timeless quality that makes this landscape a place of both contemplation and relaxation. Due to the growing popularity of the fairy chimneys, fully made up roads now lead into this remote area whose natural beauty has been well preserved. The active volcanoes that once covered the land with a thick layer of ash no longer exist but traces of them are still visible today and they really are quite a sight. The variations in shape of the tough stone are limitless. There are always new images to see in this wonder world of natural rock. Strange rock cones and needles extend for as far as the eye can see. In addition to these, the meadows add a special charm of their own. The sun also transforms the appearance of the tough stone. The interplay of light and shadow emphasizes the captivating array of fairy chimneys. The rock formations often look like fabulous beings and even take on an almost human appearance. The magnificent rock formations of Devra and Vadisi fire the imagination and really do live up to their name. The conical shape of the rocks was formed by erosion that washed away the softer tuff that lay beneath harder basalt hoods until they break off. There are further structures. The pedestal shapes originated when basalt rock rested on a column of tuff and sheltered it from rapid erosion caused by rainfall. It's not only the forces of rain and wind that form the tough stone. In winter, Cappadocia experiences extreme changes in temperature, both very hot and very cold. The area is often described as a moonscape, as it looks remote and fantastic, like another world.
The countless rock cones, chimneys and pyramids are the most photographed images of Deva and Vatisi. Pasabagai, the Valley of Monks, also contains a large variety of fairy chimneys and other tough cones. But in contrast to Devra and Vadisi, in this region of Cappadocia, there are also traces of human habitation. Monks and hermits once dug into the rock to create a living space within the natural tough cones. The most practical and authentic way in which to explore this area is on horseback. A local experienced guide takes visitors into Pasabagai's world of stone. The Valley of Monks is known for some of the largest and most beautiful fairy chimneys in Cappadocia. And after a short time, the first stone giants come into view. The origin of the fairy chimneys now becomes more apparent. The harder basalt stone forms a protective hood above the tuff below. The Valley of Monks outside the village of Gurem has always attracted interest in those who have ventured here. At the time of early Christianity, Cappadocia was one of the most important centers of religion. Here, the early Christians were able to withdraw and live an ascetic life. Surrounded by towers of mighty, tough stone, they felt closer to God. However, today, especially during the busy summer season, Pasabagai has become less tranquil. Most who come here are attracted by an architecturally remarkable hermitage located within the tuff, the Zansimian Cone. In addition to its remoteness, the early Christians also favored this as a place in which to hide from their enemies. For in the third and fourth centuries, the Christians had many enemies. Persians, Romans, Arabs, and even Mongols persecuted the first Christians of central Anatolia. A further threat to the early Christians was the Silk Road that passed nearby on its way through Cappadocia. This famous caravan route that traveled east to west was not only frequented by merchants and scholars, but also by robbers and hostile armies that plundered the land, robbed its inhabitants and terrorized the people. So over the course of time, more and more hermits moved to the Gorem area. Others formed additional communities. The region became well known due to its early Christian churches. The most important and most visited site in the Valley of Monks is the St. Simeon Chapel that is situated on a high, semi-concave tough cone. Ladders lead up to the sanctuary. In addition to the chapel are several humble hermitages. Over the centuries, a small but blossoming center of Christian culture developed here, protected by the rocks. 
The surroundings of Gorem feature around 360 cave churches and monasteries. Between Gorem and Savasan is yet another area of incredible rock formations, Gulvadisi, Valley of Roses. Here, the origin of the fairy chimneys is plain to see. It seems as though the rock needles are growing directly out of the slope. The various layers of stone are highly visible. Over the course of time, the forces of erosion have transformed this region and will continue to do so. Close to the slope, the process of erosion can be seen. The rock needles have a rounder shape. The unique beauty of this place becomes more and more fascinating. The soft and porous tough stone originated from two mighty volcanoes that are now extinct. Erkeus and Hasandagi. These volcanoes spread ash and lava for several kilometers, completely transforming the surface of the land. Before the volcanoes erupted, the land was covered by marshland and lakes, but they became covered by ash and lava. The mightiest eruptions happened between the Pliocene and Pleistocene ages. The volcanic activity lasted until relatively recently and even features in numerous wall paintings that date back around 10,000 years to Cappadocia's Stone Age. Today, the volcanoes are extinct. In some areas, the volcanic soil has produced colorful and prolific vegetation. The first settlers took advantage of the fertile ground. In around 1600 BC, the Hittites of Asia Minor grew wheat here. The existence of the Hittites was unknown for some time. However, at the end of the 19th century, scientists discovered traces of this legendary people. In the 2nd century BC, the great realm of the Hittites extended from the north of what is now Syria to as far as the north of central Anatolia. However, the decline of the Hittite realm brought with it the destruction of their towns and cities, as well as those that were located in today's Cappadocia. In Gulvadisi, the Valley of Roses, scientists searched for traces of the high season of the Hittite people. But instead, they discovered other human remains that dated back to the time of early Christianity. Today it is only wildlife that inhabits this scenic idyll. It's well worth taking a closer look at the splendor of these often hidden creatures and to enjoy the special ambience of this very special place. In the late afternoon, when the setting sun bathes the tough stone in a warm glow, the fantastic rock formations in the Valley of Roses are at their most beautiful. A view that was surely much appreciated by the first religious hermits who settled here. 
The chapels and living rooms that were cut into the stone are truly fascinating. The interior of the chapel is decorated with frescoes, although the ravages of time have left only traces of the sanctuaries that existed here in early Christian times. Further proof of the presence of Christians in this area is located close to Gulsehir. At first sight, the landscape here looks like any other region of Cappadocia, but the rocks hide a secret. In front of us, the local flora captures our attention, with the typical tough formations in the background. The charm and intensity of the shining colour of the blossom and the mysterious atmosphere of the rock formations are contrasting features of the Khasi region. The Johannes Church is, in common with most Cappadocian churches, quite subtle to say the least. Only its entrance and a small window indicate the building inside. Yet upon entering the two-aisled church, there's an altogether different impression. The walls of the upper church are covered with frescoes that have been restored. Also, the dreamy Zimi Valley is situated in central Anatolian high plains and is within reach of Gorem. Here, are some of the biggest and most beautiful fairy chimneys in the whole of Cappadocia. As in so many other places in this region, several of the tall rock formations contain caves created by the former inhabitants of the valley and have simple living areas. The white stone of the fairy chimneys of Zemivadis is quite unique. The most spectacular and relaxing way by which to explore the vast landscape of Cappadocia is to travel by hot air balloon. In the summer months, when the weather is good, there are often a large number of air balloons that can be seen drifting slowly in the sky. From above, the views add a totally different dimension. Slowly and majestically, we float through the air above deep valleys and canyons with their characteristic rock formations, and across the green valleys of Cappadocia. Driven by a gentle breeze, we drift over rock chapels and fairy chimneys. Since 1991, Gorem has been the starting point for the region's balloon safaris. At first, only a handful of balloons flew here. But today, they've become an increasingly popular attraction. Balloon safaris provide a good insight into the old cave dwellings that are otherwise difficult to see and feature magnificent views across the landscape. From here, the scenery and its strange rock formations look even more unreal. A veritable miracle of nature. Each journey is an adventure full of unforgettable natural impressions. An adventure that touches the very soul. The 
The experienced pilots navigate the hot air balloons close to the rock needles and fairy chimneys and rise higher into the sky. Both excitement and total relaxation are experienced by the sight of the marvelous landscape below. Balloon safari is the only way to travel. The small beginnings of the Cappadocian balloon safaris have developed into an extremely popular tourist attraction and a profitable business for the various travel agents located in the nearby town of Gorem. To experience the pure beauty of this mysterious landscape from the sky and to float above the fairy chimneys is a truly breathtaking way of enjoying the scenery below. Up here, time passes by quite quickly. After a couple of hours, the balloon gradually descends but not without providing a final bird's eye view of the rock churches and dwelling caves in the tough stone below. The pink valley of Gulu Dere was also once inhabited by hermits. Today, five churches still exist here. Communities of monks developed in the Cappadocia region in the 2nd century AD. Since then, the region has been inhabited more densely, but without harming its natural beauty. The idyllic fairy tale-like character of the landscape has survived right up to the present day. Surrounded by blossoming meadows are the remains of several dwelling caves, ancient monk settlements of the early Christian inhabitants of Golodere. In the 7th century, these secluded living spaces situated in the remote tough valleys of Cappadocia provided protection from the invading Persians and Arabs. Despite their isolation, the communities of monks of that time were closely connected with the nearby farm settlements. The soft, tough stone served as ideal building material. The living rooms, churches and chapels of the monks were carved directly into the rock. Over the course of time, the architecture changed from plain and simple to more complex designs. The complexes expanded and the churches were modeled according to Byzantine design. In addition to ancient Christian buildings, there are several natural inhabitants of this region that appear to be totally unimpressed by the rock churches. In the pink-colored Guru Dere Valley, many of the rocks have not been worked by human hand. Green meadows and plain rocks form harmonic unity and create a picturesque scene. A few meters on and we discover another early Christian church located at the rear of a rock. It's adorned with sacred symbols. Next to it are the remains of various living spaces.
Numerous fairy chimneys extend across the valley and highlight the mysterious atmosphere of this place, creating a splendid scenic charm. The pink-colored Gulu Dere Valley derived its name from the color of its rocks. The bizarre shape of the rocks and the distant views across the surrounding mountains are a magnificent sight. In addition to its scenic charm, the valley captivates with its fascinating cultural treasures such as this cave church that features various artistic designs as well as the remains and inscriptions of a more recent origin. Here, traces of Cappadocian history blend with the wild charm of the landscape. Culture and nature blend together as one. The contrasts of nature, blooming flowers and omnipresent rocks create an inspiring and comparable atmosphere. Many of the plants are endemic to Anatolia. In this region, the vegetation grows mainly in the canyons and valleys. The steep, eroded slopes have no vegetation. The horses that graze in the meadows are an integral part of the landscape. Indeed, the Persian name for Cappadocia means land of beautiful horses. In the southeastern region of Cappadocia is yet another wonderful valley, Sagan Livarisi, well known for its many rock churches. A total of around a hundred churches and chapels have been discovered here, along with the former monastery community's dwelling caves that are in very good condition despite their age. Sogan Nivedisi was, after Gorem, the second most important center of Cappadocian monastic life. Most of the mystic rock churches and monasteries originated between the 9th and the 13th centuries. Yet it has been shown that this region was inhabited in prehistoric times, but it is unknown when the caves originated. It's believed that the first living spaces were carved into the rock during the Bronze Age. But the high season of cave dwelling in Cappadocia began in the 7th century, when the region was inhabited by increasing numbers of Christians. For three centuries, people lived a secluded life in the caves. Under subsequent Byzantine rule, Christian life in central Anatolia became transformed. Up until the 11th century, almost 3,000 churches had been cut into the rock. In several of the chapels, barrel vaults feature beautiful ancient frescoes. In other sections, the rock walls indicate traces of destruction. It is erosion that has caused the decayed condition of the sacred buildings and monasteries, and this, unfortunately, will only worsen with time. The landscape of Cappadocia is subject to constant change, and this fact will gradually destroy the remaining treasures 
that are to be found here now. The increasing decay of the cave churches began with the decline of the Byzantine Empire, although subsequent rulers, the Seljuk monarchy, were religiously tolerant. The Christian communities and settlements of monks were thus able to go about their religious lives without hindrance. However, the high season of the Cappadocian Christian community was at an end. The Seljuks were followed by the Turkmens and then by the Ottomans. The latter did not permit the Christians of central Anatolia to expand. Over the course of time, more and more settlements around the rock churches were abandoned, such as those within the Sagan Livarisi Valley. And here is another historic landmark, the distant Yelani Kalisi. This snake church dates back to the 11th century and shows all too clearly the result of the erosion process on its ancient sacred buildings. Further to the southwest of Cappadocia is a 15 kilometer long and up to 150 meter deep canyon, Hilara Vadisi. It originated in prehistoric times due to the Melendez Suyu River. Monks also inhabited this valley. At the bottom of the valley grow many cottonwoods that are in picturesque contrast to the treeless high plateau above. A closer look reveals the remains of dwelling caves within the high rock walls. The church beneath a tree derived its name from the fact that it was only accessible via a tree. At the foot of the valley, the Melendez Suyu River and its fertile banks make a fine sight. The waters of the river are an important source of nourishment. The densely grown banks of the river compensate for the otherwise barren, stony world in the other canyons of Cappadocia. Countless trees, bushes and flowers transform the valley into a natural paradise. The vast variety of species is quite overwhelming. The valley also provides an insight into the geological past of this region. It was once covered by marshland and lakes. Today the valley is home to countless donkeys because the area is frequented by both farmers and herdsmen from the Ilara Vadisi region. Some of the old caves are still in use today, mostly for storage. The rock walls of the valley feature several small cave openings that mostly date back to the time of the Christians and Byzantines. At first sight, the caves look like relics of prehistoric times and give the Ilara Vadisi Valley an air of mystique. This impression is also emphasized by the high, bald rock walls that once provided an ideal hiding place for their former inhabitants.
The present entrance to Coca Calisi, the fine smelling church with its magnificent frescoes, is not the original. The church was formerly accessible only by way of a subterranean passageway. When following the course of the river, the wild, romantic beauty of the landscape is a delight. The picturesque contrast of both nature and history in the Alara Valisi Valley is picture perfect. After following the main section, we come across the next mysterious rock entrance. Was this the region's first secret Christian hideaway? Due to the constant supply of water and the large variety of cleft rock walls, this valley is said to be the place where the first Christian settlements were founded. At that time, the Melendesuyu River was known as Potamus Cappadocus, meaning Cappadocia River. The river cuts deeper and deeper into the valley and nourishes the surrounding landscape. It is the lifeline of the valley for both plants and wildlife, and also for those who once settled here. Far away from the big cities of ancient times, the early Christians were able to follow their religious belief undisturbed by the outside world. Although the local fauna is quite modest, the tiny creatures that live here are well worth a closer look. A visit to the Ilara Valley and its ancient treasures that form part of the history of central Anatolia and its unique wild river landscape is without doubt one of the highlights of any visit to Cappadocia. The character and diversity of its scenery is what makes this region so unique. Ilara Vadisi features an unusual array of both nature and culture. Cappadocia, legendary land of fairy chimneys. Fantastic forms that stimulate the imagination and provide an unforgettable experience of unspoiled nature. When the day draws to an end and the evening light paints the landscape in a rich palette of warm colour. This wonderful world in the heart of Turkey prepares to go to sleep until the dawn of yet another day. The history of both the upsurge and decline of early Christianity is inseparably intertwined with the geology of this region. Cappadocia, an enchanting world of stone, full of ancient history, and natural beauty.